All right, so we have finally made it to our last little section of notes. We're going to look at the developmental aspects of the special senses and then some disorders. Um, so uh, your special senses are all formed early on in embryonic development. Your eyes, and y'all will actually kind of notice this whenever we do the fetal pig dissection, but your eyes are basically just an outgrowth of the brain. Um, we'll actually have to cut the eyes of the optic nerves. The optic nerve is so thick and um, it's really not all that far from the actual eyeballs to the brain attachment itself. Um, and so we'll have to cut that in order to take the brains out of the fetal bit. And by the time you're born, all your special senses are functional. Now they're still developing, like your vision is not going to be um, the same uh, when you're first born than it is now and then of course over time it will still not be the same uh, it takes a while for your eyes to be able to adjust and your brain to actually be able to process the images that you are seeing so some eye problems uh, there is strabismus this is when you're uh, also called cross-eyed um, and this results from unequal pulls of the external eye muscles and babies and uh, there are things they can help do to decrease it, um, but if you don't do anything when they are little, then it will continue um, when they're older. So my son had a slight strabismus whenever he had, um, before he had surgery for um, cranial, his cranial vault reconstruction is what his surgery was called. Then we have ophthalmia neonaturum, and that is conjunctivitis that results from a mother having gonorrhea when she has her baby. Um, so the babies will be born with swollen eyelids and um, they will have pus in their eyes. Now the thing about gonorrhea is gonorrhea can be treated, as it, it is a venereal disease that can be treated, so it can be taken care of before a baby is born, but if it's not, then the uh, baby will be born uh, with that conjunctivitis. Then we have presbyopia. This is um, what we call old vision. And so over time, as you get older, uh, your lens will not uh, be as elastic and cannot um, adjust or accommodate as well to focus in on things. And that's why a lot of people, even if you had good vision throughout your life, over time, you'll probably have to wear reading glasses or uh, get some kind of corrective vision um, because uh, your lens will lose elasticity. Uh, looking at ear problems, we have presbycusis. Um, this is a type of sensory neural deafness. And we have uh, um, autosclerosis. Um, if you remember, sclerosis means hardening. Auto refers to your ear, um, so the ear ossicles actually fuse together. And when they fuse together, then they're not going to be able to transfer the vibrations as well. So looking at um, deafness a little more in depth, now on the back one, we said presbycusis is a type of sensory neural deafness. So what um, the difference between a sensory neural deafness and conduction deafness is going to be um, the whole process, what's actually causing them to be deaf. So sensory neural deafness is when you have damage to the auditory pathway. Um, for example, um, on the pictures down here on the bottom left, uh, you have mild sensory neural um, damage. And then on this one, you have severe sensory neural damage. Now this can be caused um, by really, really loud sounds. You always hear about people talk about, um, if you listen to really loud music, it's going to make you go deaf. Well, it's not going to make you go deaf right away. But over time, those really loud, uh, strong vibrations will cause damage to the sensory receptor um, hairs and make it much more difficult to hear. Now, this is a big issue, especially nowadays, with uh, listening to headphones. Um, while there has been some studies I've heard there's a study they say if you listen to really loud music for like 10 minutes a day that it can actually be very stress relieving 
But the problem is a lot of people, and now since everyone's walking around with their headphones on, listening um, to music, um, and really loud, like when people are walking down the hallway, or not the hallway, because we don't have them here, but um, if, you know, you're walking somewhere and someone has headphones on listening to music and you can clearly hear what song they're listening to, that is horrible for your ears. Um, so they're already detecting this trend that especially younger Americans today um, are going to see a higher increase in sensory neural deafness because of the increase in the use of headphones and listening to really loud music. Um, conduction deafness is whenever there's, for some reason, the vibrations never actually make it to the inner ear. And so an issue like this would be having a ruptured tympanic membrane or a ruptured eardrum. So um, this is what your eardrum should look like when they look in your ear through those otoscopes. Um, and this over here on the far right is gonna be a ruptured tympanic membrane. So if it's ruptured, um, you're not gonna be able to actually transfer the vibrations uh, to your middle ear along those auditory ossicles. So sound's gonna be traveling, it's just not gonna get transferred into your inner ear. Um, and that's gonna be the difference between those two. And we have made it to the end of your special senses.